the uh, topic of the topic of this lecture, manifesting the unseen. I'm going to go over a few core values and a few core principles of Islamic geometry. Now, um, what we know about Islamic art is uh, the popular belief that um, Islam, Islam, so to speak, the religion of Islam, forbids the use of imagery. You know, which for me has long served an injustice to what Islamic art is. Um, there has been a loss in translation with the Western scholars who constantly believe that the reason why Islamic art only comprised of calligraphy, geometry, and illumination was because it forbids the fact that there is no imagery um, uh, allowed. We see that contradicting itself because we see in uh, miniature paintings, uh, of Persian miniature paintings, having imagery in their art form. Now, to go back to what I was saying, how it served as an injustice, Islamic art made way for, uh, Islamic art was, did not forbid, okay. uh, Islamic art did not forbid the use of imagery, but it made an aniconic art, which is an art that did not include icons, for it to make way for the spirit to be enlivened and for it to be a true symbol of the divine creator. Um, it is built on a combination of lines, circles, and squares, and polygonal shapes. And the rhythmic tessellation, which I'll show in an example right here, uh, represents unity and infinity. So when you, when, if you see in some of my draw, uh, some of my paintings here, that I've, I've enclosed it in certain um, shapes, but when, in reality, it could tessellate to infinity and that is the symbol of God's infinite um, mercy and also God's infinite power. Um, God is everlasting, he is the first and he is the last and so that is a symbolism in correlation to that. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the historical development. Um, I, I don't think anybody knows the historical development in this room, correct? No? I, how many of you are the our first, this is the first time being introduced to Islamic geometry. Okay, everyone. <laughs> um, so Islamic geometry, little, very little history is known uh, about the development of this art form. So I'm using very contemporary matters. I'm, uh, uh, I'm painting them when in fact they're actually done in a zillage form or a mosaic form. And it originated uh, predominantly in Morocco, uh, North Africa and uh, Cairo, Egypt, uh, Syria, uh, Iran, um, Iraq. So there are many places where this art form originated. It's highly popular, however, in Morocco. So if you were to walk in Fez and uh, see an artisan chipping away, chiseling away ever so precisely at, at the tiles, and you ask him, how did you learn this art form? He'll tell you, my father taught me. Well, who taught your father? Well, his father taught him. Well, who taught your father's father? It is a secretive trade. It is a trade and um, an art form that has been passed down from generation to generation. So the whereabouts of this art form is very unknown because it has been a, a, a trade in craftsmanship within family, in close-knit families, specifically in Morocco. If you, if you were to truly walk in the streets of Morocco and see any artisan uh, do his work, that's, that would be the typical answer because um, that's how they learned. And so it really sparked interest of many mathematicians because if you were to see this and how they would chisel away at the mosaic tiling, it's really mar mar remarkable because they do it so, like as if it's second hand to them and second nature to them because they've do, been doing it for so long. And so, uh, Islamic geometry, like as I stated before, Islamic geometry has been uh, only recently discovered in the past 50 years. So, like I said, there's a lot of research that's being done here. Now, I'd like to get into the core principles really quick. Am I doing good on time? Two minutes? Okay. So, I'm going to give you a semi crash course <laughs> on Islamic geometry. Um, so, let me just pull out this example here. Um, this is just a, a regular drawing right here. Uh, I've sketched out. Now I'm going to pull this piece away and show you the construction. So this construction, can everyone see? Okay, there you go. 
uh, the construction uh, begins at the very center. It starts with a point. That is a symbolism of the divine creator. And then it encircles, and this, it begins with a point and then a circle, and that represents unity. So there is divine creator and unity, and then the manifestation of all creation is within the construction. And so when we see this, we realize that this part is unseen because if I lift this, there's a void. There's nothing that we could see that created this art form or that created this art piece. And so we wonder and we were bewildered, okay, how, did, how, do, how do we find out what this is? And so this was symbolism to God, uh, to God not being seen or as one would think that I'm trying to think of this in a fast way, but um, to God not being seen, and uh, it's the manifestation of the unseen. So there is a void, and but there is a void for a reason. The void is that it makes way for spiritualness to come through, and for divinity to come through within the heart and soul. So, yeah. Sorry, I had to go through this really quickly, sorry. But anyways, if you guys have any questions, are there any questions right now, or? Okay, maybe that'd be easier for me to answer. So yeah. Uh, please share your website and. Uh, my website is just my first and last name, Iman Hijazi, E M A N H I J A Z I dot com, and the same thing with my Instagram handle, my first Iman and last is name. E or I. E. E M A N. Mhm. Yeah. You will also share on your blog. Thank you. So any questions? Yeah. Um, when we're talking about uh, this this art from geometry perspective, was this predominantly in Morocco, or what was the art like in the east of of the Islamic State, like uh, from the uh, Iraq and east, like the Persian, Persia, or all the way to the to so China. So the middle one is actually from Iraq. It's a motif from an Iraqi mosque. Iraqi. Yeah. Um, well, well, was it was it you know, created in Iraq or in that That's part of the That's the thing, war, there is no one, or, no one really knows uh, where it originated from. Uh, like uh, I said, it, it's been handed down from one artisan to the next. I see. Yeah. But from your experience and your so study the person, of So the person, the person who did extensive uh, research on it was an Iraqi mathematician who was I saw on the site. He's the one that catapulted modern research for Islamic geometry. Um, typically, at um, least a week, because I would have to create the construction, um, like I said, uh, outline it, and then tessellate it, and interlace it. So it would take me typically a week, and then, you know, to paint it and whatnot. And it does require a uh, deep contemplative focus in order for me to start from A to Z. Yeah. <laughs> 